Hi, I'm Nigel, and I'm going to show you an overview on how to use AudioSwift. After you download the app from the website, run the file, read the license agreement, and then click and drag the app icon into the Applications folder. We need to check the trackpad settings at the System Preferences window before we start using AudioSwift. What we're looking for is to make sure there isn't any three finger swipes gestures assigned to the trackpad because it can cause conflicts with the app. Three finger taps can still be used. To check this, go to Apple at the top left of the screen, click System Preferences, then Trackpad. Click over More Gestures and check if there isn't a three finger swipe assigned here, 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 and here. If it is, please change it to a two or four fingers swipes instead. When you finish, close the window. If you're working on Mac OS 1014 Mojave, you need to do one more thing. When you first launch AudioSwift, you'll get this message asking for access to let AudioSwift control this computer. Click Open System Preferences. It will take you to the Privacy tab under the Security and Privacy section. At the row Accessibility, we are going to add AudioSwift to the list. At the bottom, click the lock icon. You need to have administrative permissions in the computer to do this. Enter your password and click Unlock. Now check AudioSwift and close the window. Again, these steps are only for users of Mojave. Now let's go to AudioSwift. If you're using a Magic Trackpad, Please turn it on before launching the app. I've created a shortcut in my dock. Once we launch it, the AudioSwift icon appears at the top menu bar. It creates three virtual MIDI ports. AudioSwift 1 and 2 are used for the mixer mode and AudioSwift 3 for the rest of the controller modes. I have made separate videos explaining how to set up and use each controller mode. Please make sure to watch them through our website or our YouTube channel. Right now, I'm going to show you an overview of the settings and the different windows inside the app. Audacy works at the background waiting to be called. By using a four finger tap gesture over the trackpad, the console is turned on. A console window appears freezing the mouse pointer and taking control of the keyboard. It shows the current controller mode you are working on. Once you finish moving your fingers to control a parameter, press the escape key in your keyboard to turn the console off. Now we can continue using the trackpad as a mouse pointer. AudioSwift can also be turned on temporarily by pressing the shift key immediately after using the four finger tap. The console will stay on until you release the shift key. Besides using the escape key to turn AudioSwift off, it can also be turned off in four more ways. By double tapping the bottom right corner of the trackpad, this only works in mixer mode. By using a four finger swipe in any direction, by touching the surface of a magic mouse or a second trackpad, or by just moving a regular mouse or trackball. Now let's go to the menu bar and click the icon. A drop down menu appears with different items. I'm gonna leave preferences to the end. Click over show console to open the console window. This is the main window of AudioSwift that appears when using the four fingers tab. At the top, it shows the mode we are working on. Click here and select one of the five modes to change it. We can also use keyboard shortcuts when the console is on or it's the key window on screen. Press one for mixer, two for trigger, three for scale, four for XY, and five for slider. A complete list of key shortcuts can be found at our website. In MacBooks with touch bar support, you will also see the five modes displayed at the top of the keyboard. The little star at the top right led the console window to always be on top. So when you turn it off, the window won't disappear. The console will just change its color to tell if it's activated or not. The middle area shows which parameters are we controlling. In this case, we are at the mixer mode and we can control one fader plus the solo, mute, and arm record buttons. 
the bottom bar shows more settings that can be changed. Let's go back to the menu and now click Show Trackpad. It opens an utility window that shows the different zones of the trackpad and where are our fingers. For example, in mixer mode, this section is for moving a fader. I slide my finger inside the zone and the corresponding fader will move on screen. If I tap where it says S, I'll solo the track. If I tap over 3, it will change the view. And now I can control two faders at the same time. All controller modes have their respective zones displayed at the trackpad window. Back at the menu, click Disable Controllers if you want to disable Audio Swift temporarily. When it is disabled, a four finger tap won't turn on the console. Watch Tutorials takes you to the tutorial section at our website. Use Check for Updates to see if there is a new version of Audio Swift available. Click Restart Audio Swift if you're working with a Magic Trackpad and you launched the app before it was turned on. This action will recognize it. Click Quit Audio Swift if you want to quit the app. If the console is on screen, you can also quit the app by pressing Command Q. Now it's time for the Preferences window. The General tab is for the general settings of the app. Select Control Mode at Startup tells Audio Swift which mode you want to start working on when you first launch it. Select Console Theme lets you change the colors of the console window between a light or dark theme to have contrast with your DAW. Check Auto Launch at Login if you want to automatically launch the app every time you log in at your Mac. With Console Window on top at Startup, the little star at the console will be enabled at Login. Check here if you want Audio Swift to automatically check for new updates. With Enable turning Audio Swift off with double tap, you can double tap the right bottom corner of your trackpad in mixer mode to turn off the console. This section shows how to turn on Audio Swift by using a four finger tap, a five finger tap, or by pressing a hotkey. The default hotkey is tap but you can define your own hotkey by pressing the set button and type another key or a combination using modifiers. Enable trackpad to automatically turn Audio Swift on is when you want to turn on the console by just touching the trackpad. This is useful if you are using another trackpad or magic mouse as a secondary input device. You just need to select which trackpad you want to use and tap it with the four fingers only one time when Audio Swift is launched. After that, the console will be activated by just touching the trackpad. This section here is for saving all the settings of Audio So you can, for example, copy the settings from your desktop and load them in your laptop. The reset button will reset to the factory default settings. The mixer and slider XY tabs are explained in separate videos for each controller mode. The about tab shows the current version of Audio and the credits. Click here and you see the license information. If you're trying a demo, it will show you how many days of trial are left. When you buy a license, paste the key code provided in this section and then click register. That's all for this tutorial. In the next videos, I'll go through the different controller modes and show you how to use AudioSwift to control, improve, and create. Thanks for watching.